a ideia desta apresentação é tentar fazer uma mapear ao, nível, ao longo da história da fotografia aquilo que foi o retrato. Uh, e no fundo estas duas, duas grandes uh, linhas, uma de como o retrato uh, ao fazer a identificação do indivíduo faz muitas vezes com essa identificação uma identificação daquilo que é um, um todo, não é? coletivo, social, uh, cultural, uh, geográfico. Podes avançar? Esta é mais ou menos... Uh, a apresentação tal como eu a delineei, em cinco pontos diferentes, que dentro daquilo que é a história da fotografia, diz Já, se calhar é melhor ler You have the ma mapping of the portrait, the mapping of the face. Sim. The first person, could, could you read that? Sim. It's okay ah, or not? And then it's images, it's photography. Okay. So, um, esta é uma identificação estrutural que passa ali um bocadinho por alguns dos, daquilo que são considerados os paradigmas artísticos aplicados à fotografia. O primeiro, aquilo que eu chamo o retrato primeiro, ou the first portrait, uh, que no fundo é o início da fotografia e como é que ela trabalha o retrato. Depois o picturalismo, vamos falar um bocadinho, o formalismo, seguir o pós-modernismo e o realismo pictórico. Portanto. E no fundo estas três sempre diferenças da forma como se faz o olhar sobre o outro, the gaze on the other, and the different uh, dimensions that uh, the, the portrait has, the scientific, ethnological, the politi political, and sometimes ideological, and also the aesthetic and artistic. Mario? Uh, nesta primeira fase, que eu chamo retrato primeiro, ou the first, or the first portrait, um, it's uh, the gaze that discovers it himself, o olhar que se descobre. Há uma cópia da realidade, da mimesis, the search for a kind of language, uh, a part of a dimension of the world, and in a great part, uh, photography and portrait is used as an instru instrument of identification. Uh, começo por esta imagem, que é um autorretrato de um fotógrafo francês chamado Hippolyte Bayard. Ele é conhecido uh, por ter descoberto uma técnica uh, fotográfica equivalente ao daguerreótipo, mas é convencido a deixar a sua técnica para segundo plano para o daguerreótipo ser considerado o grande, a grande invenção. E este é um autorretrato que ele faz em 1840, portanto um ano depois da fotografia ser uh, afirmada como uma nova descoberta, ele faz este autorretrato, que é o afogado, imagem que tem depois por trás um texto, ao mesmo tempo descritivo, irónico e, e até triste, no qual ele diz, aqui jaz o Hippolyte Bayard, que se suicidou depois de não o terem deixado uh, afirmar a sua nova nova técnica. Eu escolhi esta imagem uh, por ser um dos elementos essenciais do retrato, o autorretrato, e por, logo no início, em 1840, apontar um dos três caminhos que depois a fotografia irá desenvolver. Uh, primeiro uma versão sempre muito técnica, uh, depois uma vertente artística, mas que o faz por aproximação à pintura, e depois um outro caminho, que é este e que é o da procura de uma linguagem que é da fotografia e que é artística, sem ter a necessidade de copiar a pintura. Está nervosa. <risos> Faz avançar. Um, este é um trabalho do Félix Nadar, que era um fotógrafo francês, uh, desenvolveu uma série de retratos, de estúdio, um, e o que ele faz é, a partir de uma de alguma maneira, tratamento igualitário de todos os seus uh, personagens, uh, consegue, uma, o que há a posteriori, uma visão muito curiosa uh, de uma burguesia artística e intelectual uh, francesa. Este é um retrato da atriz Sarah Bernard. Uh, em Inglaterra, uh, até um bocadinho anterior ao Félix Nadar, 
trabalho esta fotógrafa, a Júlia de Margaret Cameron, que nasce na Índia e acaba por morrer depois no Sri Lanka, que é uma aristocrata e que a partir dos 45 anos começa a fotografar. She was a kind of aristocrat. Uh, she, was born, she was English, but born in India, in Calcutta. And uh, from when she was 45, she was given a machine. And she, so she uh, began to make a series of portraits. Uh, a lot of them, of people that were near her. Uh, and uh, you can have, you have this kind of imagery uh, in her work. Uh, very intimate. Uh, and at the same time with kinds of uh, religious uh, uh, glimpses in inner images. Em França, em determinada altura, 1850, a fotografia começa já a ser usada de uma forma comercial. E o Alfonso Guiz de Ri desenvolve este tipo de uh, aproveitamento comercial do retrato que é chamado carte de visite e que, portanto, que é utilizado essencialmente por uma, uh, por uma parte da sociedade, bom, não necessariamente pobre, não é? uh, burguesa, comerciante, e que usa a fotografia como um meio de se identificar e apresentar. E a partir daqui se desenvolve este tipo de de tipologia fotográfica, o cenário, uh, os elementos de a cadeira, os fundos, o tipo de pose, o olhar para fora, Pronto, e a partir daqui desenvolve-se uma série de uh, elementos que depois se tornam aquilo que é uma prática uh, geral do retrato em estúdio. A fotografia também, ainda no século XIX, Uh, passa a ser adotada pelas instituições uh, como forma de identificação. Uh, há um francês chamado Alfonso Bertillon que desenvolve uma, uma técnica que depois vem dar, que se vem a transformar na antropometria uh, e que depois se transforma naquilo que é a fotografia criminal hoje em dia. O que ele pretende é... Podes avançar. O que ele pensa, um, esta parte vou tentar dizer em inglês, Alfonso Bertillon, uh, he develops a, a kind of te technique called anthropometry, in which th he thinks that um, based on uh, photographic compositions and parts of the human body, you can uh, pretend to achieve Uh, a kind of patronation of what a criminal a person will be. Uh, Using facial, facial characteristics to see, to determine if one is criminal or not. Because he, he, this one is his is own, his yeah. own one, this, this is Bertillon. He was showing how it's done with his own, with his own portrait. Yes. Um, this kind of ideology has an even greater extent and, most, and more dangerous with the work of Francis Galt, Galt, Galton, which was an um, anthropologist, uh, an English anthropo anthropologist, uh, cousin of uh, Charles, Charles Darwin, and he developed a thing called Eugenia, which he thought that, uh, based on the theories of uh, Darwin, Uh, perhaps we could uh, arrange a kind of upgrading of uh, species, doing a kind of uh, uh, human selection. Well, Mengele was based on it. Everything here is terrible, but this was uh, uh, an instrument that was then used... Pass the image behind. That was then used and is nowadays used as the basis of criminal photography. This is a, a portrait of an exposition that went on in, in Porto, which is a, a city in Porto. And this is the archive of the Portuguese Center of Photography, which, is, uh, which, which, which was before uh, a penitentiary. A jail. A jail. And, and this is the, the archive 
uh, that uh, they have, and then they, they made a series of uh, a, a very interesting exposition about this. Quarterly central fee is important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the use uh, of portrait is the post-mortem photography. Um, I brought some, some uh, uh, light, light this examples. One, this one is, is, is she dead? Yeah, yeah, both of them. So this is a, this is a book uh, uh, that uh, makes um, uh, a surveillance. And, uh, it's an history of postmortem photography um, uh, because um, there were a lot of mortality uh, infantile uh, Children's mortality was very high. Very so. high. So for a lot of the population, the postmortem photography was a means of having a portrait of someone that had already died. And so you had a lot of techniques, because um, uh, photography back then, you have uh, very long expositions, so you had a lot of techniques Look, if, if in you this see your, If you see the harm, the harm is emaciated, it's almost skin and bone. If you look at the harm of the harm, yes. this one... Yeah, but it's painted, it's very, it's very light at the same time. So they, they, they prep her up, you know, they... Yeah. they, they Always. There were some, when I was preparing the, this, I, there were some really strong images because you had people that have disease, accidents, and there were astonishing images of that. But I, I brought this one because I thought they were. In the libro, they photograph Yes, so. this, is from, this, is, this is from a book. If you give me your contact, I can send you the name of the, uh, of the book. It's a really interesting book. Okay. I could, I could put it in a meet up afterwards. Okay. Um, in the this primer blog, uh, you have a lot of new paths being tested by photographers. Jacob Ries was a photographer from Denmark that went to, to live in the United States. In the first two times, he began to work as a, a police reporter. And one of the things he began to do was um, to, port, to, to make a, a really um, it was a study about powerful the and uh, new uh, work about how the other half lives. Very good and people, you know, he, 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 he documented photography very, very slums, slums in New York, very poor people. Yeah, and because of his experience as a police uh, reporter, he began to use flash, which was a really uh, new thing. And you have a kind of image that, for me, is really, it has a, a strangeness in terms of com composition that is, it's really contemporary. It's timeless, it could be, it could be, could be known. Yes, no, yes. No and I think that's what is really interesting in his work. It's because he doesn't have that kind of uh, um, patronized, posed, like we, see, we have seen in the other uh, portraits of studio. He has another, another, another way of doing it. And I think that Jacob, he's alongside with another photographer that I'm going to show you, with his Lou, that is Louis Heim, um, makes a kind of, uh, show us a, a path that uh, in, the, in the 50s is going to be uh, uh, very common. What of us have? Before going to Louis Heine, portrait, portrait to have on the 19th century also this kind of uh, dimension that is at the same time ethnological, but is used uh, in terms of polit pol politics because what you have here is, for example, an archive, a Portuguese archive on uh, people from Africa, from countries that were... Um, this one is Angola, or something. It's Angola, yes, it's Angola, yes. So it's, so it's Oriental. Oriental Africa, because... So it's, uh, so it's East Africa, then. Yes. And um, at the same time, you have, I think, there's, there's uh, kinds of different issues here. One is uh, photography being used is an ethnographical um, instrument. Uh, the idea that um, the one that is looking and the one that is being looked at 
come from really different uh, universes, and at the same time, there's a kind of uh, a a tentativa, an attempt, an attempt to make it uh, scientific, which is really dangerous. <laughs> Can we? Here you have a different uh, example of this. Uh, this is the work of Edward Sheriff Curtis, which was an uh, American photograph. Uh, he began to work really by, by, by chance, uh, but then he, he spent almost all his life working on Native Americans, and he has a, a stunning uh, archive uh, in, in, uh, in work, people in work, people in their home, in their houses, um, Portraits with pose, you have uh, really different uh, kinds of uh, portraits. And I think it doesn't have what I was saying on, on the previous image. You don't have that exotic, scientific, really dangerous look. Uh, you have a simple yet, uh, I think, respect. Yes, with a lot of respect respectful for of the, of the a subject that is still very different from the uh, from the photographer. And here is the other photographer that I told you about, Louis Hein. His work was very important for the struggle of uh, uh, the labor of children. So he all his work is on that uh, def, that kind of uh, on that subject. But you still have that difference. The subject that the photographer is, is working comes from a different world, even if it, it's in the same city, but they are very different. It's kind of, there is an economic difference mm -hmm. between the subject Economical, and the Economical, cultural, social... Because the designer had a very... His, he worked for the, for the abolishment of child labor. Because it was natural, it was normal in America to have child laboring 12 hours a day in the coal mines, in factories. So we worked very hard, documenting photographically. So look, this is how these children work. This is not, this is not for any, even for adults is, is bad, but for children is even worse. They have no childhood. We are killing our, our future. That was his work and he, he made... But yes, he he has, the difference is that you still don't have in the portrait the individual, you know? The person that is being photographed is not an individual, it's someone that represents another thing, a collective thing. That's what, uh, what I wanted to but say. But he has some sound that are very, very... This one not very, is it? Could no, we but have very, have a, yes, yeah. but he has some that are very, very... It's, it's, it's a portrait, really, because if it's child labor, it's a portrait of that child. Not this one, it's in, but the, some in, in mills, in uh, textile factories. Um, and this is, a, for me, uh, a very unique uh, type of portrait that from that period. Uh, Agnes Bellock uh, was from New Orleans, is from a region, a part of New Orleans called the French Creole, where where comes French Creole. Um, he, he had the, a normal work, in, he had a studio, uh, but these images that are called the Storyville photograph photographies, uh, Storyville was um, a neighborhood of, of prostitutes, and this particular, in particular, this work was founded uh, a lot of years uh, afterward by uh, also a, an American photographer called Lee, Lee Friedlander. And, uh, and then these pictures went to MoMA, and then there was a book and all that. But I think it's a, a really interesting and very contemporary uh, portrait to her work because it addresses a lot of things that I found very interesting. Um, the way you see the studio affair, it's really not as was done in the, in, in the 19th century. It's really now, it's not the beauty, it's, it's quite a kind of no, it, strange did, did, did he photo, Didn't he photograph in the brothels? This is the brothel, he, he, yes, it's not the studio, it's the brothel himself. He, he, he took the, the studio 
to the to the to the neighborhood, um, and I think it you, you see two different worlds, but that are together in the in the moment of the the portraiture, and you don't have a gaze that is exotic, that is all oh, the poor girls. No, it's not we, that. We know nothing really about the circumstances, right? We know nothing about the photographer or the circumstances. We just have the pictures. Isso que chegamos a um outro momento que é o picturalismo fotográfico. Depois, uh, ou seja, no momento em que uh, até aos, em 1869, vamos dizer assim, a fotografia torna-se bastante comercial um, chega a um grande público. É um grupo de fotógrafos, de fotógrafos que decide um, criar um novo movimento chamado picturalismo uh, e que pretende de alguma forma aproximar a fotografia daquilo que é um estatuto artístico e procura fazê-lo de algumas formas. Eu só trouxe o trabalho de dois fotógrafos, do Alfred Stiglitz uh, e depois de uma fotógrafa que está à frente. O Alfred Stiglitz porque, porque tem um papel... Um, Alfred Stiglitz had a, a major role in photography. Uh, as a photographer, as an editor, as a curator, as a theoretical uh, person. And so he developed the movement. He developed also um, two magazines, Camera Notes and afterwards uh, camera, uh, camera Work. And what, he, what they did was, so we have f finishing techniques that resemble a painter, and so we, we will achieve to put photography in museums. We are going to ex exhibit the, 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 the photography alongside with painting. And so they did it uh, this way. Pode se passar? Para ti que é o trabalho de uma outra fotógrafa, já tudo, queres ver? E no fundo sempre esta... Ou seja, a abordagem ao retratado não se vê grande diferença, o que se vê sim é esta tentativa de tornar a fotografia uh, arte. It's uh, like mimicking painting, you know, mimicking painting, like if painting is art, photography will be art, it would, if it mimic, it would look like a painting. Mm -hmm. That's what they, 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 they think. They, But then what happens painting. with the work of, uh, with the, the work of Stiglitz, is that on the end of his life he began to approach what was then called modernism and the idea that art uh, had to stick, uh, had to search for his, uh, for his own um, nature. And so he, he, he steps away from all this and he begins to photograph clouds. And one of the photographs that he chooses for the last uh, issue of uh, camera work is and the first photographer of this new kind of movement is Paul Strand. And here you have this. Photography is already an art in itself, but it doesn't have to have uh, painting, little finishing techniques. It's just photography. It's black and white. It's the technique, it's the 35 millimeters or the medium format, and it's people. Um, this is August Sander, he's a German photographer. Uh, he could be one of the great influences of this group, of this movement, formalism. Um, because, in a way, he thought that people were all equal and that should and they need a, a, a similar kind of treatment and so you have this all this treatment to all kinds of uh, citizens in a, in a, in Germany. Then one of the key figures of uh, this movement is Diana Arbus. And she's one of the key figures because one of the key figures in theoretical terms is a guy named John Sarkovsky that was director of MoMA, the Department of Photography. And so he casted 
some photographers uh, to be uh, the stars. And so you have Diane Arbour, Lee Friedlander, alongside some others. And here you have another kind. Um, uh, Saidu Kita, he's a photographer from Mali. And, he, uh, and it's one of the examples, uh, when I showed you before the images of uh, that kind of exotic uh, look on, the, on the, the ones that were different. Here you have the opposite. In the 20th century, you have uh, the look of the, the photographer and the subject come from the same environment, of the same language, culturally, and then you have photography that comes from that. Because you have a portrait studio. People are there to yeah. take a portrait. If they, for instance, you have people with cars and motorcycles and that, I have a car, I have a motorcycle, I want to show my friends they have, so I go to the portrait studio and I take a portrait of it because it was a regular portrait studio. Yeah. And then after the Second World uh, War, you have the, the beginning of this movement, humanism. Um, when I show you before the images of Jacob Ries and Louis Heim, I think that they were the kind of um, antecedents of this movement, in which you have uh, this kind of uh, speech of equality. So I'm looking at you, you are very different, but I look at you with uh, a lot of uh, respect. You have Cartier-Bresson and his unique way of seeing the world. Eugene Smith, one of the greatest. And this is uh, the work he's done in, uh, in Spain. It was for a reportage called Spanish Village. <laughs> and it has Steve McCurry and a kind of really uh, specific way of doing portrait at the same time. Well, it's not exactly. I brought this one, this picture of Judy Biber. She's a, she's a photographer from uh, Southern Africa. Um, and I think that is uh, an interesting. Um, it makes an interesting dialogue with the images uh, before of uh, Steve McCurry. It's uh, in a way the same, uh, the same picture, but here you have something that uh, I think in uh, contemporary uh, days we need. Images cannot, oh, I think there's not a lot of space anymore for beauty. So you have to have some kind of kick and because uh, in a way from that kick comes the truth. You know, and so photography speaks a lot about this also. But at the same time, you have a kind of uh, uh, pictorial background, the light, the color that she wears. You know, everything is very still, and you just have a face without else. So this is the work uh, about women uh, in Taliban's, and this is uh, a lady called Abi. I'll see it in a minute. It was a person that, Bibi Aisha, this is a, a woman that she met in a, in a field and she was, uh, the family of her husband cut off uh, her ears and nose because she, she wanted to move away and, and went to teach <laughs> and so she did it. And then, but then nowadays she's, she's fine because she, she has done some, uh, some surgeries. Can we move on? Yes. We are almost uh, arriving at today. And here you have uh, what we call post-modernity in photography, in which you have another kind of uh, speech, in which uh, the one that is being photographed a lot of times is the one that photographs. <laughs> but what you see, uh, even if it seems like uh, uh, even if it seems like real, it's a kind of fiction, uh, a construction made by photography. As I said, you have the work of Orlan. Orlan is a, a French artist. She comes from performance, and then on the on the beginnings of the eighties, she begins to use photography as her own way of uh, performance, and then she moves to digital. And, uh, 
naturally. But then what she does is a kind of uh, um, research upon the stereotypes of you of women being represented in uh, a, a lot of cultures in the in the world, and she addresses that that kind of. Um, which, which ones are you? Which stereotypes are 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 represented in these two pictures? Tu aqui tens dois diferentes, não é? Aqui tens um período muito mais antigo do trabalho dela em que tens a performance real, não é? So Depois tens aquele momento em que ela se intitula Saint Orlan. So it's a performance, the first one is, is a performance when the, uh, acting like a religious figure. Ah, é, é, porque ela tem esse lado. E depois aqui tens uma série que ela faz sobre estereotipos femininos em várias culturas africanas em que, tens, em que a tens a ela com as so técnicas digitais. You have tipo like uh, African African woman with uh, African characteristics and also Western characteristics yes. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, But then at, at some point she 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 loses it because she begins to to make surgeries on herself and I think she just lost it and went it's bizarre. It's, but, it's her way. She took it too far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she even, she had a certain a very interesting performance in which she she took some parts of her skin and she uh, she printed them and she it's really joy. So just so Leonard and you have this kind of project in postmodern postmodernity in photography. You have feminist issues being being treated in photography. Also. Um, the women of homosexuality that uh, Zoo Leonard uh, uh, represents and treats. What's the first one? Then Cindy Sherman, and also the self portrait has a means of expressing things that are not really just her. It's uh, this is one of the first. Uh, series that she, she made, the, the entitled stills that are um, inspired by, once again, the stereotypes of uh, women uh, parts in Hollywood, film noir uh, pictures. It is interesting, she did it all herself, you yeah. know, with the tripod and the camera, she, she shows everything, the place, the clothes, and then she staged herself and then she took the picture, it was very... It's a very uh, groundbreaking work, the book, the book that came out of this. This work is from the 70s. So this is a really interesting photographer named Samuel Foster. He was born in... Uh, let me check. Because he was born in one place and he lived then in Republica Centro-Africana. It's, it's, it's still looking... In that other one in black and white, it's still looking like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was born in Cameroon. So uh, he began to do this. This is first, this is after. He had a studio and he, he, he began to do his portraits as a way of uh, creating images for his studio and to send to his mother. But then it, they were really interesting. And on the, the beginning of the, um, of the 90s, he received the first uh, prize in Bamako F Festival, and so he began his career, and he began to develop this kind of portrait that addresses a lot of uh, figures and imagery of occidental world and non-occidental. Uh, and it's very interesting his work because at the same time it has a kind of sexually, uh, in, not in his images, but because he's um, he's homosexual, he has that kind of uh, treatment on his images, and is really interesting. And I think he's a really interesting example of uh, which is the new African photography. Then you have Francisca Woodman, which was uh, which is, uh, is she worked in um, self portrait also. Um, she had a really a uh, small career, she committed suicide when she was 22. Uh, and so the photography and the self-portrait serves really on her work a kind of um, instrument of auto-discovery. 
as my first lady. Then you have Sally Man, and that kind of, uh, uh, she just photographed her family, and so you have that, uh, that mixing of the, the one that photographs and the one being photographed. She just photographs her family in this kind of uh, beautiful and... Uh, what's the name of the book, the Extended Family, or what's the name, I don't remember. But it says, it's a family photographed year after year after year. And here you have a similar example, but the style is different. Uh, Saliman worked the family, and then Golden worked her family also, but it was this much important. more sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's but it's a document, the Shams of Hamilton. It's really interesting because, especially in the work of Man Golden, you have a photograph that, uh, th uh, that works what is re really near him, but at the same time, it's very uh, general because what she's addressing is the beginning of AIDS, uh, the 80s, in the, in, especially in New York, a kind of uh, group that went to do music, cinema. Um, and so, being so particular, it, turned, it begins to be really general. You know, the Sally man works with, with a f immediate family and then uses a, a large format camera. Mm -hmm. But the Nan Golding photographs her friends that she, also, she considers her family. Mm -hmm. And she uses a point-and-shoot camera, the snapshot. She, she makes snapshots with flash, not caring about composition. It was something that she made like, real deal, let me, let me snap this picture of my friends. They look, they look interesting this way. It's a snapshot aesthetic. And here you have another kind of statement. Thomas Wolff is a German photographer. He comes from the Dusseldorf Academy, uh, which has as key figures uh, Berlin and Hila Besher. Um, and so what he, this is a work from the 80s, and what he says here is a, kind, is a, a conceptual statement. What he says is, photography uh, is not able to touch anything that is uh, the surface. So, what you think that, oh, you can see the soul of the person, that's bullshit. What you can see is the color of the background, the color of the hair, the shape of the, the face, and you see another thing that is the statement of the photographer. And I think it's, it's not the work that uh, really strikes me, but I think it's an important statement. That is because of humanism, in which you have, oh my god, the children, that eyes, all the soul. Mm -hmm. and you, you the, yeah, I mean, it's, it's made very much like a painting. Yeah, also. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's made to and be expressionless, no expression. But you have that element, and I think his, this work uh, is a kind it's the beginning of the new, a new movement because the, the prints that were shown were really big. So you have a kind of image that looks almost like um, a, passport, a, yeah, a, passport, a photography yeah. of identification, but then you have prints that are like two by three meters, and then you have that painting, pictorial element that comes in the speech of the photographer. And here you have another example. This is. Uh, Shadi Gadirian, she's an Iranian photographer, she was born in 74, I remember because it's the same year that I was born, and sh she makes, uh, this is first in, ter in time, and this is uh, another kind of subject, and so she's also like uh, Cindy Sherman, uh, she's exploring... Uh, she stages pictures, right? She but stages. what I'm saying is, She's exploring the way women are seen and uh, treated in, um, in, this, uh, in this example in Iran. Uh, and she's using, um, for example, this kind of uh, prop of the carte visite, of the portrait of the, the 19th century. And then she begins to do another kind of work over there. But at the same time, it's strange. Because she's, with the glasses. The work of, uh, of Shadi has always a little bit of strangeness on 
minute. E chegamos ao tempo agora. Now we are on what we called the present of a documentary <laughs> or a religion pictoric. We are now. <laughs> So I think Jeff Wall makes an interesting rapport with the other photographer, Thomas Hoof, uh, on this kind of um, the importance is on the sp on the speech of the photographer, and he begins with this begins a new kind of, um, of portraiture that think that says uh, there's a space for mise en scène. In documentary photography, at least nowadays, uh, there's always mise en scène. Because photographers think that they could address reality by creating a kind of uh, mise en scène. And at the same time, there's a, there's a, a huge production of theoretical support. Uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, evolution of uh, the conceptual art. So, what is being said is equally important as what is being shown. This one is a staging from a picture from the Impressionists, where where there is also I don't know the man with this the, the the camera on the picture. It simulates our gaze at in the picture of the the, the Impressionists. It's interesting mm -hmm. because the stage it's a restaging of a, of a painting but as none, almost none, of the elements of the painting. I don't know how to spell that. And I think she does, it's an interesting approach of the classical portrait, the, the pose, uh, and all that, but then you have something strange. It's the way the the bikini is there, is the pose, she, she's, she's shy, she's, it's strange. Yeah? It's awkward because she's, she's an adolescent, she's is still awkward, not sure of herself. But if you see all her portraits are like this, there's always an element of the person is not... The, you know, Vulnerability. Yes. That was in um, uh, Latvia or Eastern Europe? In Eastern Europe so yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. This is another example, Molly Landreth is American, and this, this is a book called Embodiment, a Portrait of a Queer Life. And I think it's important, this work, because you have here a kind of uh, collaboration between photographer and uh, the person's being portrait, because what they are trying to achieve is a, is a, a look on uh, couples that are gay in America, but the kind of look that is really respectuous, uh, and and so it's a, a committed and collaborative work, which I think is really interesting. It's really recent this work, and then you have this new approach, uh, Gregory Kreis and the way he's, he comes after Philip Lloyd and Gorsia. We are almost finishing before you all go to sleep. And this is a kind of photography, cinematography kind of uh, no, because approach. You have to, it's interesting to know his, his style. He, he has a film crew. Mm -hmm. He has a film crew. He stages everything. He, has, he makes mm -hmm. lots of pictures in diff with different lights and then they, he composites them on the, on the computer. This one is probably for made by for 10 or 18 photographs all in one day but is this all this is constructed like a film set he has a really a film crew doesn't have a, doesn't have a film camera it has a large format camera for yeah, photography yeah, yeah. That's important. and then Peter Hugo also from South Africa um, his work is really interesting this one is called Nollywood and um, you have yeah. to tell, tell what is Nollywood. Uh, it's Hollywood in Africa because it's very Nigeria. Nigeria because has a very poor film studios but done lots of lots of film every year because it's a film industry in, in African style with very 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 low budget mm -hmm. but makes lots of films anyway. Uh, but for me, his work uh, has 
there's always some ethical elements on his work that uh, I don't know if he really addresses them uh, because it's the present and when when the accident goes uh, to Nigeria, uh, I think nowadays you have to think um, carefully before doing the images. Uh, yeah. 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 De um pensador uh, af, af, de estudos é. africanos. E pronto, e há uma série de fotógrafos uh, é. de uma herança ocidental que trabalham na África e é um trabalho que tem que ser pensado, não é? porque quando de repente tens esta imagem que te remete para o primeiro filme sonoro, não é? tinhas um branco pintado de preto a cantar e de repente fazes esta, este revival, pronto, há que depois aguentar o, o impacto. Não é? <risos> E pronto, e por último, já vou acabar, o trabalho desta fotógrafa americana, Tyrone Simon. Uh, e pronto, e acho que este então é um novo caminho deste realismo pictórico e também desta nova forma de formalismo, em que é o retrato e o ser fotografado. Diz? Já fizeste o resto em inglês. Está bem, está bem. Ah. Um, the subject that is being portrait. Uh, is really objectif objectified. Yes, it's uh, So everything that was before in humanism kind of work is way back. And there's a kind of need of achieving uh, a very objective, almost scientific uh, speech about photography, which is curious, but it's where we are by now. And I think it's, it's the end. I'm sorry if it was too long. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but in a way, what is interesting now is that you have all this. Uh, nowadays, you have people doing portrait, and you, you have people doing all of this at the same time. People that uh, do portraits in studio, people that do humanist kind of portraits.